to see you again. Uh, today I'm up at RSPB, Bempton Cliffs, doing a bit of gannet photography. Now, Bempton Cliffs is a fantastic place to come and photograph gannets. Uh, they're part of the booby family from the Galapagos Islands. The blue-footed boobies, the red-footed boobies, the brown boobies, and gannets belong to the same family. Now, gannets are the UK's largest mainland seabird. Well, UK's my largest seabird, actually. And uh, the fantastic birds, I mean, they dive at roughly 60 miles an hour, go to depths of 10 to 30 metres to catch the food, and they swallow the food before they even break the surface again. It's fantastic. But nature's evolved them to be able to do that because uh, in the brain, well, surrounding the brain, they have like air sacs which protects the brains from diving at such fast speeds so they don't get brain damaged and they can see underwater because they have a, like a clear membrane that goes over the eyes when they actually dive into the water and the, the fantastic they'll move the wings back in such a way that they're almost like an arrowhead going into the water and the dive at speeds of up to 60 mile an hour which is blooming fantastic really so yeah uh, some of you may know but I've actually got a new lens that I'm gonna try and out today my 500 millimeter f4 prime that I've just acquired not so long back it's fantastic lens so the images that you'll see today are taken with this lens so we'll get on and photograph some birds and uh, the birds are flying nice and high today which is wonderful because we've got a, a wind coming from north northeast today which enables the gannets to basically hover and fly above the top of the cliff edges. So well, without further ado we'll get on with it and uh, we'll see what images we can find. This is fantastic. With the wind lifting them so high up, it's just wonderful. I mean, I've been here quite a lot of times with just living down the road, but some of the sites, every time you come, there's something different. So there's, it's always worth going back time and time again to photograph not the same things because you can get something in different sh shots but with this new lens it just brings a whole new perspective to things this new lens is fantastic it's like i said it's my new 500 millimeter fr prime and it's actually from sigma I didn't go for the Nikon one because <laughs> it would nearly double the price. But yeah, I'm getting some really great shots from it. Uh, I've just moved a little bit further down, just so the background's a little bit different. And uh, 
trying to get some of the gannets as they're flying down just below the top of the cliff edge so it's a green background instead of blue right never be afraid of trying something a little bit different right if it doesn't turn out the way you wanted it these days you haven't lost anything because with the digital cameras now I mean the memory cards are fairly reasonable in price and you can delete them so you're not having to like way back when when you had to buy a roll of film then go and get it developed and then find out that you've missed the shot you can review straight away so try things that are different don't be afraid to experiment like today when now it's really bright experiment with your aperture or your your ISO and your shutter speeds because today at the moment I'm shooting northwards again and my shutter speed I've had to bump up because of the sunlight I could change the aperture but I wanted a, a fairly blurred out background but if I didn't want that blurred out background I could up my aperture as well and I'm shooting at ISO 100 anyway so yeah try something different you never know that you might find something new out about your camera I'm learning all the time just like everyone else so I've got to get back to it It's also worth as well getting a, getting a bit further down so you get a little bit of the foreground in as well because it makes a little bit of difference to the image instead of the bird being in the just in the sky you get a little bit of uh, foreground and it just sets off the picture nice I think One thing that you don't want to do is the reason why I'm shooting northwards is because the sun obviously been on the east coast is just over to the to my right coming up southeast so well east southeast and so when the sun's out should I say and not behind clouds you don't want to be shooting into the sun so while it's gone back in I'll turn round and get a few shots from the other way and hopefully I'll get something different because shooting this way is okay but half of the time you get the back end of the bird which doesn't make for a very nice shot It's also nice as well to get them while they're in the colony uh, landed on the ground you can get some nice ni pretty nice images uh, you, but you can try portrait and landscape
I hope uh, these little tidbits have helped. Um, one thing, it's very hard to tell which is the male and the female gannets. Uh, one way is the males are a little bit darker in colour than not us. Should I? I won't say they're not as vibrant, they are the bit little bit more vibrant than the females. But apparently it's very hard to tell the difference between a male and female. Now some people say look at the legs because uh, some have a, a bluish vein going through and some have a yellowy blue vein. But that's not a hundred percent reliable. Uh, so it's very hard to tell. Anyway, I hope you've liked this video. If you have, please consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for staying with me. And I hope to get out again fairly soon. Things have been a little crazy at the moment, but that's a good thing. So until next time, we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.